Hi everyone, welcome back. Jun Rao from Come From Here. In this module, I'm going to talk about geo replication for Kafka. First, why do we need geo replication? Well, there are two main reasons why you need geo replication. The first reason is for disaster recovery. So, if you only have a single region cluster, then if that region fails, then your business stops, right? But if you have availability in another region, then you can continue your business. The second reason is for aff local affinity. Because in this case, if you only have data in one region, you may have some other consumers that's in some other uh, data center that can be a little bit fur further apart. Letting all those applications independently pooling remote data can stress that uh, limited cross data center bandwidth. So it's much better to be able to pull data once into this remote region and then serve that data locally. So these are two common reasons why you need geo-replication. With geo-replication, we can solve these needs much better. We can set up this uh, multi-region environment, whether it's within the public cloud or between on-prem and the public cloud, within an organization or across organizations. So you have lots of flexibilities. Let's look at what are some of the choices we have in the geo-replication space. The, the first option is from Confluent. It's called multi-region cluster. In the, in the multi-region cluster, the way you set up is you set up a stretch cluster ap across the regions that you want to have your data. Typically, you will spread the data between the two data centers you have. But for the control plane, it's a little bit tricky. Because for that, it, since it's based on a consensus service, we do need a third data center for you to put an extra Zookeeper node or the new controller node in the KRAFT mode so that you can have the majority of the uh, nodes still available when there's a single data center failure. When you set up the, the brokers, you typically would set the enable the rack tag for each of the brokers. In this case, you will configure all the brokers in this cluster with US West, and you will configure all the brokers in this data center with US East. Once you do that, when you create a particular topic, the replicas of this topic will be evenly spread around between those different racks. In this case, when, if one of the data center fails, you can automatically have all the traffic flip over to the other data center because the leader will be moved over. Since this is really a single stretch cluster, all the offsets are preserved. So from the consumer's perspective, they can just continue with the exactly the same offset they left off. There are a couple of optimizations we can do in this multi-region cluster mode. The first optimization we can do is to enable fetch from follower for better locality. In this case, normally the consumer will always read from the data from the leader. But if the consumer is in a different geographical location, it's inefficient because it has to read the data across the remote link. In this case, what you can do is to enable this rec replica selector policy on the broker side, and also configure your consumer application with the, uh, with the rack affinity. When you set this up, the, then the broker will determine the closest follower to this consumer allocation and will be routing traffic from that particular replica to the consumer. This improves the locality during the consumption phase. Another optimization we can do with uh, multi-region cluster is through the observer capability. By default, the replication is synchronous uh, between the two data centers. If the data centers are a bit further apart from each other, this can add latency. So for some app applications, they may rather have better latency with, by sacrificing a little bit of the durability of the data. In this case, what they can do is to set up those observers. In this figure, we have the leader and followers set up in one data center. And we have some other replicas set up in the other data center as observers. Normally, the observers will not be part of the ISR. So they won't be delay the committing of the offsets and exposing the data to the consumer applications, which, is, uh, which improves the latency story. Now, in some of the cases, you can promote the observer to the ISR or even as the leader. So this can be done through this uh, observer policy. For example, you can say, if there's not enough replica or not enough in sync replica, then certain minimum number, then some of the observers can be added to the in sync replica set. If this particular data center fails, you can also issue a command to manually promote some of the observers 
as the new leader. In this case, since the replication to the observer is asynchronous, you may lose a little bit of the data. But in the common case, the observer is pretty real-time caught up with the new leader, so the amount of data loss typically would be minimum. The multi-region cluster is super useful when the data centers are not too far apart from each other. But in some cases, your geographic needs are maybe across continents. Maybe you have one data center in North America. You may have another data center in Europe. Now, what do you do in these cases? We have a few other solutions for solving those remote, far apart geographic locations. The first option we have, this is a tool from Apache Kafka. This is called Kafka Mirror Maker, Maker and we have a version 2 of that. The way this works is it has a separate process, runs as a special connector within the connect framework. So this special connector will read data from the source cluster and then write that out into the topic in a separate output cluster. In this case, you will have separate clusters in each data center, and the, the mirror maker is responsible for copying the data from the source to the target. This is pretty useful because now you don't have to worry about these two data centers being uh, far apart from each other because they are managed independently. But one of the tricky things with Mirror Maker uh, is the offsets in general are not really preserved between these two clusters, which means if you have a consumer application you want to fail over from one data center to another, you have to do some offset translation manually in the application. Another tool we have is from Confluent. It's called Replicator. This tool improves the Mirror Maker tool uh, in two categories. The first thing is when you mirror the data from the source to the des destination, in addition to mirror the actual data, it will also mirror some of the metadata, such as topic configuration and the number of partitions as well. The second improvement it added is to solve some of those offset translation problems to you. In this mode, uh, the offset in general is still not preserved within the source cluster and the destination cluster, but Replicator provides a tool that you can embed in your Java application, which will do the offset translation automatically for you when you switch the consumer application from one data center to another. The last tool I want to talk about from Confluent is cluster linking. This tool improves Mirror Maker and Replicator in a few other ways. The first thing it differs from them is there's no separate process, as you can see. It still has two, these two separate clusters, but the process of cluster linking is embedded in this source and destination clusters. So what's going to happen is the destination cluster will be embedded in the broker and it will be keep pulling from the data from the source broker into the target. Another key feature of cluster linking is it actually preserves offsets because uh, it, uh, it copies data from the source partitions into the target partition with exactly the same offset. This way, it makes the switching of the consumer age application much easier because there's no need for doing offset translation. You can just seamlessly move your consumer application from the source cluster to the destination cluster. The last thing is the process, as you can see, is more efficient. First of all, there's no extra hop right? If, uh, compared with you have a separate process. The second thing is because it's using some of the internal methods to replicate data, it actually avoids need of recompressing the data. Uh, for example, if the data is compressed, normally you will need to decompress data to, uh, to read out and then compress it back again when you publish it. But with the cluster linking, we can just copy the data as compressed and then directly add that to the destination cluster. This is actually much more efficient in terms of both CPU and network transfer. Another uh, interesting feature with cluster linking is it has the option for you to decide uh, from where to initiate the linking. Normally, the connection was initi initiated from the destination cluster to the source cluster. But in this case, as you can see, the destination is in the cloud, but the source cluster is in the on-prem data center. So if, you, if the link is initiated from the destination, it will require the on-prem cluster to open up its firewall so that the destination cluster can connect to it. This can be inconvenient for some use cases because people are always uh, a little bit uh, skeptical about opening a firewall fi firewalls for external usage. So another mode cluster linking supports is 
source initiated connect, uh, uh, connections. So in this case, you can choose to have the source start opening a connection to the destination cluster. And once the con uh, destination cluster received this connection, it can reverse this connection and use that to start pulling the data from the source to the destination. So they achieve the same thing, but obviates the needs for the on-prem cluster to open up the firewall, which is a big security improvement. With all those choices, how do you choose among those uh, uh, different options uh, when you think about geo-replication? Now, this table tries to summarize some of the differences among those uh, different options. In general, if the two data centers you have are not too far from each other, the multi-region cluster can be your best choice because it supports both synchronous and asynchronous mode, and it also preserves offsets. If the two data centers are too far apart from each other, then the best option right now is cluster linking because it actually preserves the offset for you and it also makes the replication process much more efficient. So that's the end of this module, and thanks for listening.